Okay, so welcome to the third lecture of the series Introduction to Tropical Geometry. Today in Leipzig it's 37 degrees centigrade, so it's a tropical day indeed, very fitting for a tropical geometry lecture. So our third lecture will be about fields and varieties, the first half of chapter two. And uh, if we're given a field, denoted k, we're going to say evaluation on this field is a map that takes the field elements to the real numbers extended by plus infinity that satisfies the following three axioms. First, the valuation of a field element A is infinity if and only if A is zero. So the zero element, additively neutral element has valuation infinity, every other element has a valuation that is a real number. Second, it's a homomorphism with respect to multiplication in the field, so the valuation of A times B is the valuation of A plus the valuation of B. And finally, for the sum, we have the following property, the valuation of A plus B, so A plus B are field elements, is greater or equal than the minimum of the valuation of A and the valuation of B. So for Multiplication we have an equality, but for addition we only have an inequality. So the valuation of A plus B is greater or equal to the minimum of those two. Now one example of a field we might think of is the field of rational numbers. And uh, if we pick a prime number, for example P equals seven, then there is a so-called seven attic valuation. So the Valuation of a seven attic valuation of a rational number is the, uh, the power of seven that appears in it. So if the numerator has a power of seven, then it's that power. If the denominator has a power of seven, it's minus that power. Now here is a basic fact that follows from these axioms. So lemma 211 says if the valuation of A is different from the valuation of B, then we actually have equality holds in the third situation. So then equality holds in three. Right? So if A and B are different valuation, then the valuation of A plus B is equal to the minimum. So the only way there could be a drop, a strict inequality, if there's some kind of cancellation that arises if A and B have the same valuation. Now if we have a field with such a valuation, there's additional algebraic data. So there's an associated ring, it's a local ring, the valuation ring R. So this is the set of all constants in the field, all field elements C with non-negative valuation. So the axiom is sure that the sum and the product of things with a non-negative valuation still have non-negative valuation. So this is the, uh, the associated local ring. So uh, in K, in the rational number, so these would be uh, the subring of the rational number consisting of all rationals whose uh, denominator is relatively prime from seven. So only the numerator can contain it. Then we have the maximal ideal. Right, so local ring has a unique maximal ideal. So this is all field elements with strictly positive valuation. So in our example, the maximal ideal M is the ideal generated by seven. Right, so these are all rational numbers. The numerator is actually divisible by seven. And finally, Last but not least, there's the small field or the residue field. 
little k, and the residue field is R mod m, right? So if you have the local ring modulo a maximal ideal, that's a field, and this will be called the residue field. So if I tell you we have a field with evaluation, all of this additional data arises and gets carried along for the ride. So, so in this example, k, well, so I have the, uh, the local ring modulo the uh, ideal generate by 7, so this becomes the finite field, the small field is the finite field with seven elements. Right? So in this situation, this is something called mixed characteristic, right? Because big K is a field of characteristic zero, whereas little k, well, it's a field of characteristic seven. So this can happen, that the field and the residue field have different characteristics. Now, an important example of pure characteristic discussed in detail in this section, so this is example 2, 1, 3, is the field of Peugeot series. So we're going to start with the field of complex numbers, but then we enjoin an unknown T, and we form a field by uh, taking formal power series in T with the complex coefficients, and rational exponents. So we allow rational exponents, um, and then there's an additional divisibility condition on those exponents, a mild condition, but we don't require conversion. This is a very, very nice field. So these are formal power series, and the valuation is the smallest exponent of t that you see. There will be a lowest order term, some lowest power of t, that has a non-zero complex number for its coefficient, and that's going to be the valuation. Now an important fact about the Peugeot series, that's one of the reasons why we like them so much, is a theorem 215, which says that K, this field of Peugeot series, called this K, is an algebraically closed field. So it's an algebraically closed field with a non-trivial valuation. The residue field here is just the complex number. So both the field and the residue field have characteristic zero. And algebraically closed means that any polynomial in one variable with coefficients in k has a root in k. And then in fact has degree many roots counting multiplicity. So for example, this means we can solve equations, right? So we might have an equation like x to the fifth plus x or minus x plus t equals zero. So x is the unknown, the coefficients, the scalars are one minus one and t. And uh, you can practice this in the exercises. So exercise 27 has additional examples. So what this says is that this polynomial has five roots in this field, and these five roots are formal power series in T with exponents that might have denominators, like five, for example. And uh, most com many computer algebra systems have a built-in command for carrying this out, right? So I'm using Maple, but if you use Sage or Mathematica, you can do this as well. You can solve polynomials in one variable into formal power series. So in practice, <clears throat> the fields that we like to use in practice are subfields, right? So inside the uh, Peugeot series, there is an algebraically closed subfield, namely the rational functions in T algebraically closed, right? So this is a, a subfield. Why is that a subfield? Well, because every ra rational function in T has a power series expansion, can be written as a power series in T, so every rational function is a power series, and the same holds for the algebraic closure. So this is a, a subfield. Now what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that you can never write down a complex number. Right? You cannot email a complex number. You cannot email a real number. The real numbers, I've said this many times, is like peace in the Middle East. It's a wonderful idea. It's something to strive for. 
probably we're not going to see it in my lifetime. So in your lifetime, you will not see a real number or a complex number. It just has too many digits. And you will be dead before you see the end of the real number. Okay? For that reason, we work with uh, fields whose elements you can communicate by email, such as Q of t or the algebraic closure. Okay? So another situation is uh, p addicts. And I'm going to, by slight up use notation, I'm going to write q p bar. But simply, I this mean q bar, the field of algebraic numbers endowed with a particular valuation that extends the p adic valuation for a prime p. Now, extending valuations to the algebraic closure is a little bit delicate. And this is illustrated in example 2116. So the question here, slightly trick question, is what's the two-adic valuation of some particular algebraic number? What is the two-adic 